Hello, my name is Lizina Rahman, Technical Marketing Engineer for Future Electronics. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use Wicked Studio to get your Nebula IoT reference design board connected to IBM Bluemix and IBM Watson to visualize real-time data. For the hardware components, we will need a Nebula board, the Light Ranger Micro Click board, a USB cable, and of course a PC. For the software components, we will need an IBM Bluemix account, a terminal emulator program such as TerraTerm, and Wicked Studio 5.2 or later. There are five key steps we must follow to connect the Nebula board to IBM Bluemix. One, we must create an account in IBM Bluemix. Two, create our device and register it in IBM Bluemix. Three, compile the code using Cypress's Wicked Studio. Four, open TerraTerm and run the device. And finally, five, open an IBM Watson session to create cards and view the results. Step one is to create an account in IBM Bluemix. A free trial account is offered for 30 days and no credit card input is required. The trial account contains access to two gigabytes of runtime and container memory to run apps. Fill out the information as requested. Once you register, you'll receive an email with a confirmation link. Click on the link to get started. Step two is to register Nebula to the IBM Watson IoT platform so that it recognizes our device. Using the registration information, we can configure Nebula to connect to the Watson IoT platform. First, we must create our Cloud Foundry app through IBM Bluemix. Select Catalog, then scroll down to locate the Internet of Things Platform Starter Boilerplate. We will be redirected to a page called Create a Cloud Foundry App. Enter in an app name of your choice. I will be naming mine Nebula Future, and then select Create. Once we select Create, we are redirected to the Apps page. It will take a few minutes until the app is started. Once the app is awake, we're given the option to start our Watson IoT platform. Find the appropriate service, then click on it. On the redirected page, select Launch. We are directed to this landing page. Using the menu on the left-hand side, select Devices. As you can see, our Devices page is blank. We will add Nebula to this page by selecting the Add Device button on the top right-hand corner. Select Device for type or create a new one, enter Nebula-IoT as a device name, select Next. As the boards don't come with a serial number, we can make ours to be as we wish. I'm going to name mine Nebula ABDC. Select Done and register device. Enter a device ID, I'm going to name mine Nebula. Enter a serial number, as I mentioned before. There's really no way to distinguish the Nebula boards, so we can choose our own, and I'm going to name mine Nebula-ABDC. Select Next. You are presented with a device security page. You have the option to choose your own or use an auto-generated authentication token. I will choose the self-provided authentication token method. Select Next, select Done. Now we're presented with the device credentials page. Please store this information as they are unique to your board and are non-recoverable. If you lose it, you will have to repeat this entire process. We've just completed step two of five. Let's get started with step three. Now would be a good time to ensure that your hardware is connected to your PC. Please place the Light Ranger board on top of the Nebula board using the Microbus socket, like so. And connect the board to the PC through your USB wire. Moving along, we need to open Wicked Studio to compile the code and enable the board to communicate with IBM Watson IoT platform. Let's open up our Wicked Studio. First, using the pull-down menu, select the Wi-Fi device. Create a new folder called Nebula in the apps directory. Copy the Bluemix IoT command application snippet folder and paste it into the new Nebula folder we created. Next, copy the sensor and thermistor drivers into Wicked Studio. Navigate to Libraries, Drivers, Sensors, copy the two folders, and paste it into Wicked under Libraries, Drivers, and Sensors. Copy the certificate's root CA, client, priv key into Wicked. We will do that by navigating to Resources, then Apps. Copy these files and paste it into Wicked under the following file structure, Resources, then Apps. Now that we've imported the appropriate files and folders, we can make some modifications. Expand the Bluemix IoT command folder under the Nebula folder. 
Select the Wi-Fi config dct.h file. We need to go into this file and modify the Wi-Fi parameters. Wi-Fi SSID is defined through config app SSID and the password is defined through config app passphrase. Please enter the details that correspond to your network. Now we need to update the make file to include the Nebula platform. Make files indicate which evaluation board is used as a target device. Open the make file and add backslash at the end of line 29. Add neb1dx underscore 01 to line 30. The next step is to run the file. The way we do that in Wicked is to create a make target. Copy and paste an existing target, modify it to match the following format. New application folder name, dash target platform, download, download underscore apps, run, and press OK. Run the file by selecting the new make target we just created, and check the console port to make sure the file build was successful. Your build should have finished successfully. This concludes step 3 of 5. As we previously stated, step 4 is to open a terminal emulator program, such as TerraTerm, and configure the IBM credentials we created in step 2. I will recommend that you open up your web page with the IBM credentials and keep it handy. Open TerraTerm and set the serial ratings to have a baud rate of 115200, 8-bit for data, none for parity, 1-bit for stop, and none for flow control. In summary, we will enter the commands to stop the MQTT service first, then enter our Wi-Fi access point credentials. If we have entered the correct settings, the application will allow us to enter the IBM credentials we have from earlier, and then we will save these settings and start the MQTT service again. To stop the MQTT service, enter stop underscore MQTT. Next, we need to set the Wi-Fi access point. So enter into terminal set underscore Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi SSID, well, this would be the SSID for your Wi-Fi network. Then enter the security type, so for us it's WPA2, and then enter the Wi-Fi password. If the connection is successful, the cursor will change and allow you to enter information for your IBM Watson credentials. We do that by entering set underscore MQTT underscore settings, organization ID, device type, device ID, authentication token, and each parameter is enclosed by quotation marks. Next, enter save underscore MQTT underscore settings, and then finally we want to start the MQTT service, and we do that by entering start underscore MQTT. Please ensure that you've entered the information in the proper letter cases as it is case sensitive. If everything has been entered successfully, you will see that the MQTT connection is open and is publishing the temperature, ambient light, range, and a message summarizing the three parameters. We have successfully completed step four, and now on to the final step. The final step is to see all of the steps we did previously come together in IBM Watson. We will need to configure boards and cards in our IBM Watson dashboard. Boards are used as a landing page and use cards to create visualization of charts for real-time data from devices, such as our Nebula board. We can create gauges for visualizing physical quantities, such as temperature, and use donut charts to display current values of data points. Open your IBM Watson IoT platform page through the IoT service on the IBM Cloud dashboard. You'll notice that our dashboard has two services. By default, when we created our Cloud Foundry app, the Cloud and NoSQL DB and the Internet of Things service is added. Go ahead and select the Internet of Things service. Select Launch. You will notice that there are three default boards displayed. Risk and Security, Usage Overview, and Device-Centric Analytics. Each board demonstrates different statistics and analytics information. We will create our own board called Nebula Analytics. Select Create a new board from the right-hand corner and enter Nebula Analytics under the board name. For the description, enter Display Environmental Information. Now we can add cards to display various data as raw numbers and real-time graphs. Select the Nebula Analytics board and add new card. Select Gauge and select Nebula-IoT, then click Next. Next, select Connect to New Dataset and select Next. Under Events, select My Event. Under Property, select Am underscore Light. For Name, enter Ambient Light as we are trying to display the ambient light readings. For type, select float, and for unit, enter lux. For precision, enter 2. For minimum, enter 0. And for maximum, enter 2000. Select next. We are now in front of the card preview page. Select the size of desire for your card. I will select medium. 
and then I'll select next and lastly enter the title of your choice. I will enter ambient light and pick a color scheme and select submit. You'll observe now that your board has a card called ambient light. Next, we'll add another card to display temperature. Following a similar procedure, we'll select add new card from the top right hand corner of our dashboard, select bar chart and select nebula-iot, then click next. Next, select connect to new data set and select next. Under event, select my event. Under property, select temp underscore Celsius. For name, enter temperature Celsius, as we are trying to display the temperature readings. For type, select float, and for unit, enter degrees Celsius. For precision, enter two. For minimum, enter zero, and for maximum, enter 30. Select next. So we're now in front of the card preview page. Select the size of desire for your card. I will select small, and then select next, and lastly, enter the title of your choice. I will enter temperature, and pick a color scheme, and once again, select submit. And finally, let's add a card for the range distance. Following a similar procedure as the previous cards, we'll select add new card from the top right hand corner of our dashboard, select donut chart, and then select nebula-iot, and then click next. Next, select connect to new data set, and then select next again. Once again, we're gonna select event, and then select my event. Under property, select range underscore millimeters. For name, enter range millimeters, as we're trying to display the range readings. For type, select float, and for unit, enter millimeters. For precision, enter one. For minimum, enter zero, and for maximum, enter 1000. Select next. So we are now in front of the card preview page. Select the size of desire for your card. This time, I will select small, and then select next, and lastly, enter the title of your choice. I will enter range, and pick a color scheme, and then select submit. You'll observe that your dashboard has three cards displaying three different data points. What I find really interesting is that the information presented on my TerraTerm terminal and that that is displayed on IBM Watson are identical. See, if I shine a light on the sensor, the reading is displayed on TerraTerm and the reading on my ambient light card is updated to reflect this change. Well, this concludes our tutorial on connecting the Nebula IoT Reference Design Board to the IBM Watson IoT platform. For more information and to order the Nebula board, please visit us at futureelectronics.com or see your local Future Electronics representative.